turn right. Continue forward with caution. What's going on? Turn left. Uh, I'm going to the grocery store. Then why are you here? I'm using my GPS. Turn left. Turn left to pass in front of desk. Uh, surely you could have started this in the car. Why would I do that? This thing does all of the stuff for you. I mean, this takes a, a load of effort off of my plate that I could use doing other things. Like what? I don't know, watch TV probably. Turn left. Turn left. Turn left. <laughs> Rerouting. It doesn't even know where you're going. When has GPS ever steered you wrong? Literally a third of the time I use it. Turn right. Walk forward through the wall. C come on, I'll, I'll drive you to the store. No, I want to do this myself. With the GPS. With the GPS. I don't know what you expect to happen. I will reach my destination. Yeah. Reaching destination. Come on, Brandon. You just have to accept the fact that... Hey, I got nutty buddies. What? GPS, man. Yeah. Oh, hello everyone, I'm John. And I'm Brandon. And this is the So and So Show. Oh, oh. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Come Hold on. on. I know, I know, I know we're shooting. Sorry, Hold on everybody. one second, I'm sorry. Hello? Yes, this is he. What? You gotta be kidding me. Really? No, no, that, that, that's, that's great to hear. Oh. Thank you so much. No, you won't regret this. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like good news, huh? The best news, you'll never guess. Uh, uh, yeah, you won the lottery. Never. Uh, they're bringing back PB Crisps. Better. Oh. You are now looking at a brand new parking attendant. Uh, wow. Oh. <laughs> oh man, right, don't cry. <laughs> Woo! Okay, this is what you were excited about? Of course. Ever since I was a young boy, I had one dream. To be a parking attendant? No, to dunk a basketball. Oh. But since I can't dunk a basketball, maybe I can tell basketball players where to park! Uh, I gotta go! Okay. <laughs> no, wait, but the show! No, 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 I'll be back! I'll be back! I'll be back! Oh, good, you're back. I, I was just staring into the middle distance. H how did it go? The power. <laughs> what are you talking about? Brandon, have you ever been in a position where you told someone to do something and they just did it? As your co-host, very rarely. It was incredible! I tell people where to park and they just go there and they park. They'd wave at me and I'd tell someone they couldn't go down the aisle. And then they'd just move along. Yeah, like a parking attendant does. Just imagine what I could do with this power. I could go beyond directing people in a parking lot. <laughs> I'll be back! No, this is... <laughs> I'll be back! Yeah. <laughs> We need to clean up on aisle five. Hey, move along, everyone. There is nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. You can do better than that. Give me five more miles. Come on, come on. Feel it. You, stop boogieing. You're scaring everyone. 
You, more boogie in. Come on. All right, so back to what we were talking about before. I, I don't know that being a parking attendant is about power. It's, I mean, it's not all about you. Are you kidding me? No. No. With a vest like this, what else could it be about? I don't know, helping other people, uh, making sure that no one gets hurt and parking stays orderly. No, it can't be about that. It's gotta be about me! Okay, <laughs> well, since you're back, I think it's probably time for- Sorry, Brendan! I hate to interrupt you, but there's a segment crossing, hmm? Coming through, come on through, Bible story time with Kellen. Come on through, Bible story time with Kellen. Hey, Kellen. Like my new outfit? It's eye-catching. That's the idea. What's up this week, Kellen? Well, this week, I actually need your help with something. Oh, what's that? You have to tell me who is the real deal. That's right. You two are the judging panel on our game show, The Real Deal, where we find out which of our contestants are fake and which one is the real deal. Let's introduce them right now. I am a Roman commander. I am a Roman commander. I am a Roman commander. That's right. One of these three is a Roman commander who had a very special interaction with Jesus that you can read all about in the book of Matthew chapter eight. Judges, it is your job to identify which of these three is the real deal. Great. I'll go first, because I've got the special vest. Go. Okay. Roman commander number one, where are you from? I am from Italy, but more specifically, latitude 41.902782 and longitude 12.496366. Roman commander number three? <laughs> California, my dude. Hmm. Number two? Rome. That's round one. So fellas, what do you think? Do you have a good idea of who the Roman commander is? I've got an inkling, but I'd love to hear a few more answers. Sounds good. Go ahead with your questions. Uh, Roman commander three, can you tell me a little about your experience meeting Jesus? <laughs> of course. It was extremely dope. I saw him at the mall. You saw Jesus at the mall. Totally. He was shopping for a new pair of shoes, sandals specifically, and at the Birkenstock store. And you know, he asked me my opinion, and I, you know, told him the truth. They're the best in the biz. Huh. Uh, Roman Commander Two, what about you? We met in Capernaum. I heard he was going to be in town, and I needed his help. When I found him, I said, Lord. My servant lies at home and can't move. He is suffering terribly. What did Jesus say when you told him about your servant, Roman Commander One? Oh, excellent question. He said, mix together two cups of vinegar with uh, ha half a cup of honey and approximately one fourth teaspoon of cayenne pepper and my servant would be as good as new. Yeah. No, that's not what Jesus said. When I told him my servant was sick, he said, shall I come and heal him? Which really took me by surprise. Why would it? Well, what you would know if you were the Roman commander is that Jesus, as a Jewish person, wasn't supposed to enter the home of anyone who wasn't Jewish. Right, but Jesus showed how much he cared for my servant, even though he had never met him. So, did Jesus come to your house? Roman Commander 3? Totally. We played um, Subway Surfer for hours. Dude's got some serious skills. Oh. Um, actually, I'm sorry. That, that's not what happened. Here's the truth. When Jesus said he would heal my servant, I knew two things. One, I was not worthy to have this man under my roof. His spirit of giving was incredible. And two, he didn't even need to be under my roof. All he had to do was say my servant was healed. 
and it would be done. Um, excuse me, uh, but what you're talking about isn't scientifically possible. Well, not possible for most people, yes. But Jesus. Listen, I'm in charge of people, you know? Soldiers obey my orders. I tell one go, and he goes. I tell that one come, and he comes. But Jesus' power is so much greater than mine. His word travels farther and faster than mine could ever. What happened next? Well, that's what I told Jesus. I told him I knew all he had to do was say the word. And when he heard this, he was amazed. He said to those following him, In Israel, I have not found anyone whose faith is so strong. He said that about me. Wow, what a compliment. Oh, number three, you're supposed to still be pretending. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> totally. I remember this happening. Continue, number two. Well, after that, Jesus told me to return home. It would happen as I believed it would. And when I got home, my servant was healed. Just like Jesus said. Uh, Commander One, do you have anything to add? Uh, <clears throat> uh, my hypothesis, I would have to say, if you consider all of the factors and variables on the particular occasion regarding the person in question, then I... No. No, I do not. All righty, fellas. Are you ready to make your final decision? Hmm. Uh, I mean, number one seems very smart. And number three seems fun to hang out with. Uh, but I think that we both know uh, it's Roman, Roman Commander, Commander number three, two. two. Will the real deal please stand up? <laughs> Thank you all for letting me share my story. The pleasure was all ours. Great job, you two. You figured out which one was the real deal. This Roman commander showed Jesus the ultimate respect. He humbled himself and he asked for help. And he respected Jesus by believing how powerful he was. He was sure that Jesus could heal his servant with just a word. And we're still talking about that commander's faith today. That's all I got. I'll see you next time. Thanks, Kellen. Well, uh, my parking powers seem pretty puny presently. Yeah, but your alliteration powers, though. Perfect. Yeah. Hey, but you're right. We might be good at a lot of things, even great. We might even be in charge of something, but nothing compares to what God can do. Precisely. I'm gonna give you a break from saying all those P words because it's time to reveal the question. Ah. Oh, okay, here we go. The question of the day is, how do you show respect to God? Yeah, one way you can show God respect mm. is by coming to him when you need help. When, when you ask God for help, it shows that you believe that he can help you. Uh, you can respect God by respecting others too because God loves them. You respect God by looking out for those that need your help. Uh, or those who need a freshly opened parking spot. Oh, no, you're speaking my language. <laughs> Do you have to go back to your parking lot job right now? or uh, You know, I, I, I think I'm fine. Okay. The power really went to my head, you know, so maybe I'll just let other people park themselves. <laughs> Whoop! Okay, never mind, I gotta go. All right. uh, until next time, I'm Brandon. And I'm John. And this was the So-and-So Show. Yeah. We'll see you soon. All right, I'll be back in a minute. All right. Well, I was talking to them. Oh, sorry. I'll, oh, well, I'll see you soon, too. All right. Feel the beat. Uh-huh. Do the traffic man. Now the head opener. <laughs> now the lawnmower. That's a lot of beans. Cutting the pizza. Now you get a slice. <laughs>